and you've mentioned Europe and UK before and, and China. Uh, so I'm guessing that you think they're, they're probably at different stages of, of this and uh, I'm assuming they're going to act differently. Is that what you're thinking? Yeah, well, I, I maybe start with China because it, it's really big. Uh, it's the world's second largest economy. Um, and, you know, I think China is in a difficult circumstance where um, a lot of the drivers that have made them successful over the last 20 years are basically dried up. Like what's the, the first thing that made them successful was of course, you know, moving hundreds of millions of people from farm to factory and becoming a massive exporter. That was very successful, big deal. That's kind of in the, you know, that's in the past, not in the future. And then uh, they tried to keep it going through by extending a significant amount of credit and basically juicing their housing and real estate related markets, uh, which kept growth strong, but they're starting to see the limitations of that. And now they're looking at a situation where, um, you know, they're unlikely to have sort of like an acute crisis the way a typical emerging market would have, you know, because most of the debts are in their own currency and they can print the money uh, or forgive the debts. That's not that big a deal. But the the issue is basically like, are they in a position to do something? Like what what do they need to do to stimulate the economy? And I think that's a real, that's a real question about whether the 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 government, you know, the the Xi administration is actually compelled to uh, ease in the way that is necessary, or that would be would be uh, plausible given the tools they have available. You know, you know, so far they haven't really done it. In the last couple of weeks, we started to see, you know, like if you squint a little bit and you kind of turn your head to the side, you could say, ah, maybe that's a little easing. You know, ten basis points here you know, a hundred dollar uh, check to households there, you know, and better than nothing. But I, I think the real question is, uh, it, it, you know, it, it's essentially run government. And the question is basically, is she going to do, you know, engage in the stimulation that's necessary? I don't know. There's better like political minds out there uh, about China and the politics and all that stuff. I mostly just like look at what they're saying from a macroeconomic standpoint and then just see whether it's a big deal or not. And so far, what they've been doing is a small deal. It's not enough. Maybe it'll be bigger. If it's bigger, then, you know, then we'll think about that. But it's not going to be a real source of strength in the global economy. Um, so anyway, I've, I've nan nannered on about China, <laughs> but it's not looking good. And then I think actually I could be just a lot, a lot more concise about Europe and the UK, which is, look, they are in tightening cycles. Their inflation is too high. Their central banks have tightened. They're more fragile economies. Uh, you're seeing economic conditions slow down pretty meaningfully, uh, particularly in in continental Europe. You're seeing it slow down, um, but uh, and you're seeing some weakness in UK employment as well. So you know maybe they're turning the turning the page and maybe they're starting to slow down. You know, starting to to move into a, a weaker situation. But the problem is both of those countries have inflation that's too high and central banks that really do need to keep at it to bring that down, you know, like people are, are, uh, are, are being joyous about the fact that the, that European inflation is at five and a half percent core inflation is at five and a half percent. And it's like, okay, their mandate is two. So like, you know, we got a long way to go. Uh, and six months ago, inflation was six. It's like at this pace, we'll all be dead by the time the ECB gets, you know, inflation back to their mandate. So they're going to have to keep at it. And the same is true of the UK, like, you know, Wages are growing at 8%, nominal wages are growing at 8%. You know, inflation remains extremely elevated. Core inflation remains extremely elevated. And you put that together and then, you know, the Bank of England has more to do. And so you basically have this situation where Europe, UK, US all need to continue to run tight monetary policy to slow down the inflationary pressures. And then the Chinese basically won't do what's necessary. They don't have an inflation problem, but they won't do what's necessary to reflate their economy, you put that all together, and that is a pretty unpleasant mix of conditions that we're staring at for the next, you know, year, year and a half. 